Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wikipedia Weekly. I'm your host, Andrew Lee, also known as user Fuzz Hedo, and I'll be bringing on Richard. Hi, Richard. Hi, Richard. Uh, user Faros for coming to you from uh, New York. Yes, and thanks for joining us today. We are doing uh, kind of a new type of programming with the Wikipedia Weekly Network. As you may know, we've been having a number of episodes here, whether it's interviews with specific people or covering a certain topic. But we thought today was uh, a great time to try out something that we're just calling for now, edit with us. So it's kind of a free form type of format where we want folks who are listening and watching us to send us comments and uh, you know ask us to edit things related to Earth Day. And we thought this was a nice way to not be too formal, but have something that commemorates Earth Day um, while maybe giving you a tour of some of the things that we're aware of. But you might be aware of more stuff that we don't know of yet. So we'd love to put them onto a list of events and activities that we know of for Earth Day 2020. Right, Richard, yeah. what other things can we look forward to in a session like this? And I'm firmly of the opinion that we should have as many wiki holidays as we can uh, in this time. Um, <laughs> so we're going to look at some of the uh, the state of some of the uh, Earth Day and, and environmental related articles on English Wikipedia, um, look at some of the state of them on Wikidata, and, and try to understand where our strengths are, where our weaknesses are, and uh, maybe get some of a, like a 30,000 foot view to see, you know, like how these articles have accumulated over time. Is there something maybe from people in the comments about like how the, say the environmental article or the global warming article should be improved? And just like a sort of general comment, you know, maybe you don't want to go right in and, and change the first sentence of the global warming article, but uh, it, maybe we can have some ideas. And also we're going to yeah. go over some of the events. So there, uh, spontaneously over the past, oh, about 48 hours, um, there's been some discussion on the, uh, the conference, uh, uh, re uh, remote organizers of Wikimedia group um, and, and about uh, about Earth Day events. There are about oh uh, half a dozen at least that have popped up uh, from from uh, New York uh, to the Levant and uh, beyond. And uh, we're going to review some of the events that people are holding uh, around the world to commemorate Earth Day in the uh, the Wikiverse. Yeah, that's a good point. We actually have I know that Boston has an event tomorrow. We've got some folks doing some today, um, so we'll go over those. And also, if you have not been tuned in before, you probably know how to reach us, but facebook.com slash groups slash Wikipedia Weekly, or on Twitter, you can reach us at Wikipedia Weekly. And if you're on YouTube, please do subscribe. I think we're imminently uh, having our 100th subscriber to the channel, which allows us to do a lot more interesting things. Yeah, we have 98 subscribers. The 100th subscriber will get a free stub written by me. On top of your choice. <laughs> a stub of your choice. Wow, that's yeah, that's something you can't even buy. So that's, that's yeah, and you can't buy it. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's very exclusive. I would not sell it to like the major corporations of the world, but I will give it to you as a prize. It's priceless. It's priceless. Priceless. Uh, yeah. So please uh, subscribe to us if you're on uh, YouTube. Uh, you might be watching us on Facebook Live, on YouTube, on Periscope, or Twitter, or Twitch as well. So we're streaming to all four networks. And we also want to make sure that you know that we are um, using StreamYard so that if you are a Facebook user, visit StreamYard.com slash Facebook if you've never been there before. And that'll allow your name and icon to show up. So the cool thing about this platform, StreamYard, is if you comment on the platform where you're watching us, we can see your comments come through and we can surface them and bring them up on the screen um, as appropriate. And we can actually react to them or to... Uh, edit articles that you might want to suggest. So that's been um, a real strength of this platform going forward. So um, before we go any further, let me show you some of the things that are listed here on this page. So this is the Earth Day activities page. Let me actually show that to you here. Earth Day 2020 events and activities. So this is a sub page of the meta.wikimedia.org page on sustainability. So there's, uh, there's Richard coming back here. So this is the page that has what we know of so far as events related to Earth Day. So Wiki Caribbean had their training just the other day. So they have a whole day of activities, I think today, right, Richard? So they have a virtual edit-a-thon. Yeah, they have a nice, they have a nice virtual edit-a-thon going on today, including uh, um, user Gaetarda, Ian Ranjan, who's who's done quite a bit of uh, of eco articles about the about Trinidad and some other areas of the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they had their training uh, yesterday, and they are doing things through the dashboard. So if you've never seen it before, there is the um, outreach dashboard, 
And this gives you some really cool stats if you've never seen it before. Uh, and you can have campaigns or, or you know, kind of initiatives where people can sign up and declare what articles they're editing. Richard, give us a little bit more of a tour of the uh, dashboard since you're very experienced with it. Yeah, so the dashboard is a, uh, by the way, we'll mention we do have 101 subscribers now. So thank you, Wikimedians, for joining us. Thank you. Um, so the dashboard was was developed by the Wiki Education Foundation, uh, which I'm a member of, um, and it it <laughs> primarily to track um, contributions by students and university programs, say where they would work on a on a in an article as as part of an assignment, say in lieu of a, of a midterm or something like that, or a term paper, um, and it it tracks all the contributions by uh, by a group of editors over a period of time, um, and primarily it's meant to contract uh, to track and. Uh, Ed edits by new editors and to help sort of provide a format that is comfortable for them to work with. And more also crucially, it helps provide um, alerts if there's anything goes wrong with the articles. Um, and it provides good good statistics about um, about how many articles were written, how many bytes were edited, um, different languages, the things were done in. Um, and it's it, it also helpful if you you know if you want to have like good metrics for your programs. <laughs> That's also a nice benefit of it. This is the version that anyone can use for any purpose. So it's the program dashboard, uh, program and events outreach dashboard. Uh, it's a sort of a slightly step down and generalized version of the uh, version that was developed for the education program. Right. So it, anyone can create their own kind of campaign here to track. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and you can there. So there's big campaigns for Barton Feminism is probably the biggest one. But you can have any any user group and chapter can have their own campaign. Uh, you can have campaigns for Earth Day, um, all sorts of campaigns. And there are a bunch of individual editathons that are part of a given campaign. Um, and in, and an event can also be part of multiple campaigns. Um, if, for example, it's um, you know part of uh, you know a collaboration between different groups. So you just join mm -hmm. the uh, the edit the editathon on the dashboard. Um, the nice thing about it is that it's it's synced to your wiki account through OAuth. So you know you can just log in through your wiki account. There are also some nice tools um, to create accounts uh, in there because there's often like a problem with creating new accounts. So there's some right. nice little tools. There's often like little tutorials. Um, so it's a pretty neat tool and I think it could be even be developed uh, further. Yeah, it's been a great tool for uh, measuring, you know, the outcomes of either classes or events. And uh, yeah, and it's really nice that they've done this. I think I, I watched it earlier on. They've expanded the time frame here, which is good because um, a lot of times we'll have like a track start and end of like three to four hours if we have a really yeah. well-defined event. And especially for an online edit-a-thon, it makes a little more sense yeah. <laughs> because, you know, I mean, not everyone's going to, you know, want to like tune in to watch a live edit-a-thon. Um, I mean, maybe you, you are doing that right now. So there are at least eight people are, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, it might make sense to like do it over a couple of weeks or something or a week or two um, and, you know, have that more asynchronous participation. I mean, also it's good because you can, there are also things for tracking during events itself and tracking them afterward because you do want to catch uh, the people who contribute the, the rare uh, gems who might contribute a little bit afterward um, and see if you can provide them additional support. Right, exactly. So that is what uh, the Wiki Caribbean folks are doing with Earth Week, which is great. Let's take a look at some of the other things that we know of that are happening in our Wikiverse. Let's not go off again. And let's go all the way back to Sustainability Earth Day 2020 here. Uh, as we mentioned, Boston is having a virtual editathon. We can actually go to the Wiki Meetup page. Yeah, I think this is actually t tomorrow. It's at Boston University, uh, but supported by also by Phoebe Ayres, who's at MIT. So we'll bring together the, uh, the different aspects of the academic aligned Boston Wiki community. I believe you have one hour to register. Uh, if you officially want to get on the registration <laughs> list, um, it closes at, uh, at 3 Eastern today. Although I imagine if you're an accomplished, uh, experienced week meeting, we can probably sneak you in anyway. Yes, you should register. Get your tickets now. 74 remaining. Sales Whoa. coming in an hour. They're, they're going to, but now that, now that it's on Wikipedia weekly network, there's going to be a spike in sales. They're gonna be <laughs> <a sub -hub. laughs> it's, it's the I hottest online registered. ticket in town. I think I've already registered for it, but anyway, this, these are the questions that you'll have to get in. Oh, yeah, I've already signed up for this. Now, remember, are you a BU faculty staff or student? So. I hope Phoebe will forgive me if I try to register after this uh, podcast. <laughs> you can do it now. I won't I won't look. So. Yeah. Okay, so 
Do they have any topics yet here? Let's see if they have any things. So, oh, they have an Earth Day 50 dashboard as well. Let's take a look at that. Uh, only three others uh, registered for now. But Oh, so this this was the one I saw before that was a very narrow time, like only three hours of uh, time. That's right there. So very well-defined uh, time period there. All right, so there's their dashboard. Uh -huh. Everyone's got their own dashboards. And then top, possible topics for editing, environment, stub, wiki Whoa, project. Oh, sustainable art. art. Sustainable art. Interesting. Oh, that's very... Uh, anyone out there listening, has anyone edited sustainable art knows anything about sustainable art? It's very claim-oriented. Yeah, let's see if we can make this a little bit bigger here. Maybe understood as art that is produced with consideration of the wider impact of its work and its reception in, in relationship to its environment, social, economic, biophysical, historical, and cultural. Interesting. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're in New York. <laughs> maybe if we have time later, we can talk about this. This is a, a, a script that I run, which shows you the ORS predicted quality. So, this is basically what the machine learning system has predicted as the quality, which you'll notice is quite different than what the hand curated rating is of this article. So this is typically not to be too dismissive, they're quite stale, what you see here um, as the article rating, if you bring up this option in the gadgets. So this is what the AI believes the quality is. And this is generally closer to the truth here than looking at the possibly years old rating that the article has gotten. Bye. I wonder if we should think if there should be like a, a bot, like suggest an upgrade. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this article may be worth stepping up a level. You know, we won't do it ourselves, but you can put it on like the talk page. Um, well, especially if yeah. that's improved by a large margin or de decreased by a large margin. I mean, this is probably one that we're going to edit intensely later on, but this is a good spread as well. So the last time Earth Day was rated, it was a C class article, but ORS thinks it's a good, good article, a pretty high good article too. Like closer to featured than than in, than you would think, so that is certainly a problem that we have these stale article ratings in Wikipedia. That it's, uh, I think it's a feature. <laughs> Staleness is a feature. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like well, you got the human rating and you got the artificial rating. I mean, but the human rating should have like a clear timestamp. Yeah, I, I guess I wish that when you saw the start or C class, it said this was as of what date. Like the date was always next to the rating, right? It's yeah. kind of like it's useless if you don't have a date next to it. At least or as you know that it's immediate, right? Yeah. Also, I mean C class is not inconsistent with, with GA, so that's also weird. <laughs> it's on like a different like whatever dimension. True. That's true. Uh, okay, so anyone who wants to comment or if you have any experience with ratings, and we can maybe show folks later on, if you're interested, how to turn on those features to see the article ratings. And these are, again, going with the theme of things we wish were on by default, but uh, aren't. And we can maybe walk through those things. Uh, Swedish Wikipedia or Wikimedia Sweden has a activity going on. I guess I should translate this if I want any hope of telling you what this is. Writing cabin. I love that. Um, online writing <laughs> cabin, cabinets with Wikipedia. <laughs> There's always like a delightful use of English in the international wiki community. <laughs> Am I the only one who thinks of like Swedes sitting in this in this frozen tundra in a little wooden cabin on like a, on a frozen I'm, I'm thinking of Ikea cabinets. <laughs> on what cabinets? I, Ikea cabinets. Oh, so Ikea some, cabinets. Some yeah. lovely designed Ikea cabinets. I guess I'm thinking of like Minnesota fishing shacks on a lake or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, themed environment Earth Day is approaching. So they've been underway for a while now. That's good. And they do have yeah. a video conference. So some of these have video conferences, some don't. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm displaying the password. Okay. I should probably get away from that. So that's the Swedish effort there. Now tell us more about this one, the NYC Waste and Environmental Justice Earth. Yeah, so this is uh, this is a nice edit-a-thon. It was originally planned in person. There's a uh, there's a can there's a canning facility in uh, Brooklyn, so not far from my home, uh, where uh, people are encouraged to bring in cans um, and have them recycled, and they you know they get some compensation, um, and it's a sort of a, both a social and an ecological uh, project. Um, and uh, one of their uh, volunteers has been coming to uh, is a is a Wikimedian part of the Wikimedia New York uh, chapter. 
and uh, had planned an edit-a-thon at their facility. Uh, and particularly one of the interesting things about their facility is that it has a lot of cool pictures you could take about like how you about recycle of recycling equipment and how stuff is like gathered together uh, from the community. Unfortunately, that couldn't be done in person, uh, but they are um, but they are holding it online. Uh, I think as we speak, a bit of an online edit-a-thon, and uh, I I sent it to I invited them to maybe comment uh, on the uh, the feed if they want to join. Um, there's some good stuff happening. Um, as well, in terms of uh, there's some interesting things we can look at in terms of canning on Wikipedia. So mm -hmm. um, canning as a an activity that often uh, people who have difficult life circumstances do to to earn some supplemental income is in is a pretty good article on German Wikipedia, but doesn't exist, or at least until recently, did not exist at all on English Wikipedia. Um, and it's it's kind of an interesting topic, and you see like you know maybe is there more uh, consciousness type of thing in in Germany. Um, but it, it and so one of the things is to sort of to to share this this model, um, and then and, and also to share you know like pictures of the equipment and 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 all sorts of uh, other related ecological uh, activity. Right. right, that's cool. Yeah, and I like the name. Sure, we can. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the title, and this is um... it's got a sweet picture too. I think Jim Henderson took that picture. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Let's see. Took it. Took it. If you want to click on it. Curious. This one? Oh yeah. And we have a special guest. We have Oh yes. Rosie. Hey Rosie. Hey everyone. Happy Earth Day. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Happy Earth Day, Rosie. Glad to be here. Yeah. So let's see, what are we looking at? We're looking at the picture of the Brooklyn based recycling facility here. We're trying to find out who, who took the, the very Brooklyn based recycling facility, as you can see from the, uh, <laughs> the <laughs> no, garden it's, it's, okay. So this was taken by, I guess it was taken by one of the, uh, by one of the organizers of the uh, facility. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice, it's a nice photo. I guess there could be some debates on commons about, you know, about the artwork there. Hopefully it's, it's de minimis oh. or something. Oh, right. <laughs> I don't, right. I, That's public I don't mean art. to make trouble. I don't mean to make trouble. <laughs> really cool. It's a nice artwork, but I, you know, it's it's also functional. It, the grate goes up and down, so <laughs> it's, it's functional. <laughs> yes, me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. So for folks who are not familiar with this, like anything that can be strewed as be construed as you know public art, suddenly it has all kinds of copyright issues, right? So, yeah, interesting. Do not show up in person. I like this. Do not show up in person. That is a a good reminder Stuff there. All, yeah. And articles to create lots of red links. Rosie, this is your favorite thing, red oh, stuff. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Uh, let me look at that Peggy Shepard article. Peggy Shepard, Abigail Dillon, Sina Wazer. I wish there was a little bit of description of who these people are, but we could maybe look them up real quick. There's a lot of like for like uh, waste management. Uh, the waste management infrastructure of New York City is 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 not mm -hmm. very well covered, and I'm sure of other places as well. It's sort of like you know maybe not that exciting topic to to everyone, but right. it's pretty important. And you know it's and <laughs> infrastructure is always is always important hey, in times of uh, crisis. There is a New York Times piece this last year about Abigail Dillon. She's the um, head of Earth Justice. So um, president of Earth Justice. So there's a New York Times article about her. So she's clearly notable. Yeah, I'll she's definitely good. look at, at um, maybe creating that. Um, can you click on the one for Peggy Shepard? I, I really like this article. Mm -hmm. And I can see that it's rated as start class, but its quality is actually that of C class. And right. I just reviewed it myself. So I'm going to make that change pronto. Um, nice. Let's see, it only shows currently Wiki Project biography. I'm adding Wiki Project women writers because she's a writer. And mm -hmm. what do we have for environment? What else can I add here? We've got one for Wiki Project environment. I'm going to add that. Nice. And let's see, make this C class. And what uh, Rosie's talking about is on the talk page, which is odd for a lot of newcomers. Like, you wouldn't think to go to the talk page to find this metadata, but that's pretty much the only place we have for it. But you want to see more, yeah, you want to see more classifications and relationships here. Oh, I'm going to add one more. 
And then I'll ask you to refresh the page so that it all shows. I'm going to add mm -hmm. African diaspora. Right. Done. Yeah. Okay. Great. So let me hit refresh and look at all the stuff that Rosie just added. It used to be just biography. And then she added women writers, environment, African diaspora. And then you can actually open these up and see all that. In fact, we can see the source and see, look at that. So that's what Rosie just added right there. Importance, low, class C, all that stuff. That's great. Yeah, she could use a few more categories. The only category this article has is living people. Yeah, that's right. So Howard University alumni. Yeah, Howard University. What else are we, what else are we using for these kinds of articles? Uh, Anyone else familiar? Initially a journalist, so you could use some journalism categories or women journalists. Yeah, 21st. Yeah. Environmental and activist categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could add that, that would be great. American. And then she has some awards. I doubt this is modeled in Wikidata. We could take a look at the Wikidata real quick. Human, oh, doesn't have much here in her wiki data. Oh, no, actually, a few awards. It's not, not bad. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Good. Could use some more, but not bad at all. Cool. All right, so good. That's uh, definitely some interesting stuff that could be added just based off that. Sure, we can web page. So this is kind of neat in that we're just kind of like, dipping into each of these projects across all these different communities, which actually we would typically not do if we weren't locked down for coronavirus. So actually we're going further because we're in virtual uh, virtual mode there than we normally would because we'd probably be more concerned with our own local Earth Day thing. Yeah, sometimes you might debate for like, you know, six months about how to like brand the, the wiki uh, Earth Day event <laughs> across a couple of <laughs> different continents. And uh, now we're just putting them all on the meta page, uh, yeah. which isn't a bad thing. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, if anyone else has any um, has any things to add to the page, it's scrolling at the bottom there, meta.wikimedia.org slash wiki slash sustainability slash Earth Day 2020. Thanks to Rachel Ferrand for creating this to start things off uh, earlier this month so we can accumulate all these here. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Is it tonight, Richard? It's tonight. It's in. Uh, it's at, uh, I think, uh, it's at 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's in uh, four and a half hours. And we're having our, our Wiki Wednesday, which is our normal um, monthly meetup of, of Wikimedia New York City chapter, uh, usually with pizza. Uh, not with pizza tonight unless you, you make your own. Because <laughs> because we're we're homebound, but we're having a a a, a Wiki Wednesday salon to bring together the community, and we are having a, a special talk by uh, by Esther Jackson, who's a comedian residence at the uh, the New York Botanical Garden, about Earth Day and uh, environmental topics. Um, and uh, you can join; it's on it's on Zoom. Um, and I think we're going to have uh, uh, presentations and and general talk uh, for the first hour, and then maybe have some breakout sessions for uh, a half hour after that. Now, is this open only to members of Wikimedia in New York City, Richard? I think you'd be uh, welcome to join, uh, especially you know Wiki, Wiki, Wikimedians uh, from uh, across the world. If you'd like to join, I think I think that's okay. Um, it's not a it's not a you know it's not we don't we don't normally our, our meetings are normally you know closed to members. If anyone's in in New York, they usually can join. Um, but now you know New York has become a bit, bit, bit bigger. Um, <laughs> although, <laughs> although obviously the majority of people will be coming to New York and will be talking about New York things and focusing on, um, you know, uh, New York environmental efforts and, and hopefully how one of the things we'll focus on is how we can, um, work more on some of these environmental, uh, wiki projects in New York as, as, uh, after this crisis is over or as it passes slowly. Right. Very cool. So we shout out to Esther Jackson from the, uh, from the New York Botanic Garden there. Right. And then we also have here. Wiki contest. My Spanish is terrible, so I'm gonna have to use the Google Translate of this. Uh, <laughs> this is pretty cool. This is 
today. Oh, throughout the month of April, they're doing an ed online editing challenge for natural spaces. Nice. Yeah. I wonder if someone's coordinating something on commons. Did, did we cover that yet? Did we talk about that? I didn't see anything. That's a good question, Richard. I don't think there's well, there is Wiki Loves Earth, which is coming up, I think, and uh, at that's the start true. Of May. So we maybe talk about that a little bit. Right. We do have Wiki Loves Earth, which we don't have on here, do we? I thought we had it. I mean, it's not directly tied to Earth Day because it's usually a little after Earth Day. Um, but it's obviously, it's very much in the spirit of today. <laughs> so I think it, 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 Yeah, broadly construed, I think. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can put it in C also. Um, we definitely should. OK, let's do that. Might okay. as well do it right now, live. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Rosie, I'm sure this is completely foreign to you since you never use this. I do not. <laughs> but it's not completely um, foreign because I actually teach this or use oh, interesting. So you teach VE even though you don't use VE. Right. Well, I, I follow, I have a slide deck and which makes it easier. Right. So let's take a look at Wiki Loves Earth while we're talking about it. This is a, um, it's not obvious from the title, but it's an international photo contest. Yeah, and it's devoted to natural monuments. So as opposed to Wiki Loves Monuments, it's mostly devoted to, say, historic buildings mm -hmm. uh, or structures. And this is devoted to things like parks, protected areas, um, and all sorts of natural environments around the world. Mm. It was started what? by, I think I believe it started by uh, Nat Timkov. Uh, who's who's from the Wikimedia Ukraine chapter and currently uh, sits as one of the elected members on the uh, the Wikimedia Foundation board. And they're lucky in that this is one of the things that you could still participate in that you wouldn't be violating most of the lockdown orders. Well, I don't know most, but you could still participate by walking around your neighborhood and taking pictures and things like that. You you have to be careful, and it would depend on you know the circumstances. <laughs> uh, this might be a good year to upload your uh, photos from uh, last year. Um, or the, you know, the ones from the archive. <laughs> right, uh, right. Is this something that folks who are part of um, iNaturalist might want to kind of segue and participate in? I was just about to think, I was just about to say that, that we didn't even think of talking about iNaturalist for this uh, Earth Day 2020, but that makes complete sense. So Rosie, what, you, you want to tell us what iNaturalist is or how you and I think I got to know it at the same time you did. Well, I got to, I, I, I can briefly say I got to know it at the same time you did, Andrew. Um, and I think Richard might have been around as well, was mm -hmm. in um, Berlin during Wikidata, the day after Wikidatacon. Mm -hmm. And um, several of us signed up, got iNaturalist accounts, and then we walked around Berlin and we took photos of trees and shrubs and worms and other <laughs> natural things. And then there's a way that that connects to Wiki Commons and you can actually see the photos that you took uh, through iNaturalist on, um, in Wiki Commons. Um, maybe you can describe how that works, Andrew. Yeah, so the cool thing about iNaturalist um, there's a bunch of different apps these days that do this, but the nice thing about iNaturalist is that you you can actually set the um, the license to be compatible with us, right? That was the big thing, Rosie. That iNaturalist as an app allowed you to say, oh, every image that I upload to the iNaturalist system is going to be CC by or public domain, like let's say CC zero. And then the nice thing is that. Once you upload your image there, there's a community of folks that help you identify plants or flowers or insects or animals that you photograph. They even have an AI system that's pretty good for a lot of these things. So it says, um, I think that's a you know a North American box yeah. turtle or something like that. Yeah. And then once a few people have confirmed it, saying, you know, this is good, this is good, then that picture becomes classified as what we call research grade. And then um, Ryan Caldari wrote a script that allows you to point to the iNaturalist photo and suck it into comments and allow that to be uploaded in kind of one shot, which is kind of nice. So that's where iNaturalist has come, become one of the more popular ones in our community. Um, 
like Dario Dario from the Wikimedia Foundation at the time and other folks in our community like working with it to bring in those photos into Commons. And uh, yeah, it's been a really nice uh, kind of adjunct to what we uh, do with Commons Uploader and things like that. But I encourage folks to try it out on their phone. iNaturalist is probably the, the one that most people play with the most. And I don't want to do too many screenshots of an iNaturalist or we might have too much copyrighted imagery in our video stream. De minimis, for... Andrew, de minimis. De minimis, that's why I said, okay, five seconds, I'm gone. I'm not gonna show too much of that app on the screen. So uh, yeah, so Wiki loves Earth. iNaturalist is a great tool to, to, to try out as well. Maybe we should put a link to that, shouldn't we? Let's see if we can find a good link to iNaturalist. Um, Maybe there's on one on Is there a meta page for it? I, I don't know, I'm gonna check. Uh, there is a category called media from iNaturalist. So I guess that's automatically tagged. Let's see if, if we can make that a see also. Is it a see also? I don't know. Let me, let's make a whole new section. Just say like projects. Sure. And then I'll just put that in there. Someone can clean it up. I'm very sloppy right now. So this is media from iNaturalist. So you can see these are images that Rosie was talking about. These are things that people have snapped using the iNaturalist app, and they've been brought over with the script that, um, actually, that may not be all of them were a script, but most of these are a script that Ryan Kadari wrote. Let's take a look at this one, more so details. Here's, here's something we encountered when we first started working with iNaturalist is that, uh, you know, a CC BY is not the default setting. Right. And, you know, I've, I wish there were a way to, help people understand that when they take photos, they have choices uh, regarding licensure versus just opting for whatever is um, the easy option and not going for something like CC BY where you have to actually make that a change. Um, right. I think people just don't understand the licensing, which is why maybe they um, copyright the images that they take. So if there's more discussion around that, I think it would be good all the way around. Yeah, I mean, there are, there are like a certain number of people who are like professional photographers and they want to protect their, oh, you know, yeah. copyright. But I mean, the vast majority of people, I think, you know, especially if they're taking a photo of something as impersonal <laughs> as a ladybug, um, will want to share it. Yeah, and just show you, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Look, I was going to say, it's kind of, uh, an easy way to to join the wiki movement in a different way. It's not all about writing encyclopedic articles, um, taking photos of things in your neighborhood and uploading them into wiki commons is another way that you can participate. Um, it's all good. Yeah, that's a great point. And you know, one of the earlier episodes we had this week was working with Jan Anali where photos that were put into mapillary.com or also CC license. So you could grab those images and bring them into our wiki sphere. Same thing with this, right? Organizations where we can get them to, uh, you know, use a free license or they have compatible licenses, they can bring them over. So you can see that this media file is part of an observation here. And you can actually go back to the original observation on iNaturalist if you want to see who or when that was made, which is pretty neat. Yeah, neat. So I'm glad we ran into that. So we now have, now have added that to our list of things. We could probably write something more about how you could use iNaturalist to make observations and upload them. But th for now, that's a good placeholder. Um, and then we also have another uh, uh, event from Wikimedians of the Levant. So this is Jordan, Lebanon, Palestine, Syria region. Mm -hmm. Let's see what they're up to. Oh, maybe I didn't point to the exact project. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah. You just went to the pink thing on the user group. Oh, here it is. 2020. Yeah. My Arabic is rusty. So. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to have to <laughs> right to left translate it into English, but that or nothing. Cool. So they're doing. Nice. Oh, wow. Nice collection of articles. Oh, nice. Yeah. Very nice. Cycle, take a fee, action plan. Very cool. 
Oh, sorry. Hmm. The problem of the hundred thousand years. Look what that is. <laughs> Where's that? That's at the bottom. The problem of the hundred thousand years. Huh. Is that? So I saw an article on that Wikimedia Levant page mm -hmm. uh, regarding the name Amy T. Austin. And I've pulled that up now. I'm taking a look at it. She is an Argentinian ecologist, principal research scientist at the National Scientific and Technical Research Council in Argentina. She's also a professor of agronomy. Uh, and she was awarded the L'Oreal UNESCO for Women in Science Award. Awesome. Hmm. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah. So someone out there who might be interested in expanding it, this would be a great opportunity. In other words, you wouldn't have to start from scratch. The article already exists in English Wikipedia. And if you can find more reliable sources about her, you could add that information into this article or take a look at the three references that are already being used. Perhaps there's information in those that you could use to expand the article. Yeah, interesting. It appears to be some sort of discrepancy, a 100,000 year problem, which I was totally intrigued by, and sorry for going off topic, seems to be some sort of discrepancy <laughs> in the uh, in the history of paleoclimate. And, and I guess by comparing current climate to past climate is how we you know understand the impact of, of climate change. And so this is a, a, a deep historical uh, issue to try to resolve that. And I'm glad that they're covering it on English Wikipedia and Arabic Wikipedia. That's cool. I would not have known about this if we hadn't gone to the Arabic project. This is an interesting one where the, you, this is not often, it does happen, but the hand, the hand uh, assessment is good, but the or says C. Normally you kind of see the other way around where the articles are getting better and then the, the rating is stale, the hand rating is stale, but the or says better. This one is kind of the inversion of that. I wonder why that is. It might have been uh, hmm. addition yeah. of content or something. It's a good that, article process too. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Okay, let's go back and take a look at um if we if we hit most of the things. Yeah, I think we hit most of the events um, for that day or for today, and then tomorrow there's going to be the Boston one. But I thought one thing that might be interesting is to look at the Earth Day article itself, which is kind of interesting because we have some things we can fix about it, but it'd be interesting to see if each of you take a look at it and see what you would fix, and we can maybe try to fix them live on the podcast. Or if anyone else in the comments or questions have any observations on this, So for me, one of the interesting things is um, I often will look at the table of contents and I see that it's a little bit odd in that the the one, the 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 headings are kind of long and a little bit inconsistent. Um, so like the Earth Day name and <laughs> like you could just say naming or like history, naming history or something like that rather than the Earth Day name. Um, and then down the bottom, there's some issues with the references if you look down here well there's some kind of bare references down here uh -huh. and i saw some errors down here before so i'm wondering if we try this this is kind of interesting to show folks if you don't know if you turn on the um this menu in your gadgets you can actually access a tool i use all the time which is expand bare references right there so this will run the tool refill and this is going to basically check all the references to make sure they're well-formed. And it will also go out and double check to make sure the formatting is correct. Now this takes a little while sometimes because if you have a lot of references, it's got to go out and hit all the URLs and double check them. I don't know why it's taking so long to start up here, but let's see if it'll start up. Do either of you use refill much or not? I have, but I don't generally use it. 
if I see that there's a lot of references where they don't have it completely filled out, I'll sometimes just run refill because it's easy and you can look productive while hitting one button. So, right. yeah, of course, there are. Go ahead. I don't know, just a different topic. I was going to say, I'm looking at the references too, and there are no um, Harvard ref errors showing up. You know how those show up in red? Mm -hmm. There is no such problem in this article. There are no errors, but there are the bare references. So I'm glad you're taking care of that. I, I think someone took care of them earlier today because oh. I saw them this morning <laughs> and I'm like, Ooh, this is a good one to fix. And then I look at the edit history, and there have been a whole bunch of edits this morning. So that's like, always that's always a good reminder when there's you know when there's a holiday. The, the, the I, I follow some holiday articles because I kind of think they're interesting, and mm -hmm. some holidays get treated better on Wikipedia than others. Um, right. But I you know there's always like a lot of like editing around the holiday itself, and sometimes there's vandalism and there's disputes, and every you know every more holidays are controversial than you could possibly imagine. Um, <laughs> and so that's it's my one of my little areas is the holidays of Wikipedia. Right, um, and also I'm not sure, but I this is this may be referred to from Google. Um, true, yeah. I wonder if there's like a doodle. There must be. There must be some kind of doodle. Uh, I I see something else that's interesting to me. If you scroll to the very bottom of mm -hmm. the article on the external link section, you can see that there were two Wiki News related events. Oh. And we haven't really <laughs> talked about Wiki News, which also, well, Wiki Quote has quotations related to environment, which isn't exactly Earth Day, but right. Um, but look up Earth Day in Wiktionary. Wikimedia Commons has media related to Earth Day. So our sister projects have links to things having to do with Earth Day, if, you, if you're at the bottom of this article or at the bottom of any other article, you can kind of see those. Although I should caution, they're not always found there because right. they are also listed in the, in the left-hand column if you're on a, a laptop. But if, you're, look, if you've got the mobile view, um, there is no left-hand column. So... Right. So uh, I, I was uh, I was bold, and I removed the two Wiki News articles because it doesn't scale. Right? Well, first of all, they're two thousand eight, two thousand nine, and are you really going to add another box for every year since those dates? It just doesn't seem like a scalable solution, right? I will so, say, yeah. of course, the holidays are also holiday articles are also pretty popular. So um, the last few years, there have been. Um, hundred thousand views uh, on the the Earth Day of Earth Day, mm. um, and I, I think a couple of years ago there were like you know over three hundred thousand because probably because it, you know people were searching for it. Sometimes it's featured in the Google Doodle, um, so these do get a lot of attention on uh, one three hundred sixty fifth of the calendar, and it's <laughs> you know <laughs> it's not as good to try to prep it a little bit beforehand. I, I would say just looking at the article in general. Um, as with many ideas that do not have a, a single, uh, or well, in some cases maybe they do, but um, there are many directions that created Earth Day, um, and so you'll right. see there are about three or four sections about the about the founding of Earth Day, um, slightly different, um, slightly different starting points, um, and there's also like you know different sections about things that could be considered sort of Earth Day, like people celebrating the equinox in, in an environmental capacity, um, and I think this could you this article like like you know some of these general topics could do with a good going over and a good thought of how to just reorganize it um right i heartily agree with you on that um looks like wiki's having a bad hair day but uh a little slow but yeah earth day's definitely got an uptick in, in the last two three days right there so, Richard, you said something interesting earlier. You said that you kind of like to follow these different kind of um, international or national holidays and take a look at the articles that are associated with them. Do we have a wiki project for that? Uh, we do. I'm not very active in it, but we have a wiki project holidays. Um, ah, okay, I'm going to add that. Oh, I'm not see. finding it. It's it's called just Wiki Project Holidays. 
Um, I'm on the top page and trying to add it in, you know, oh, yeah. Raider. Yeah, so let's let's add it, I guess. It, it's not coming up as an option. Oh, it's it is it's it's an option. I mean, I, I, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe just maybe maybe you have to add things manually to Raider. Do you use that? Uh, no, I don't use it. So there is it is actually listed here as part of Wiki Project Holidays, but Wiki Project Holidays is also considered inactive, uh, at least on the template on the uh, the talk page right now. Ah. Maybe that's why it doesn't show up. Um, I use this little tool or gadget all the time. In fact, a lot. Um, and it's it's available if you hover. Uh, maybe you have to add it through your preferences. Do you use it, Andrew? If you hover which tool? Over, if you if you hover over if you're in the article itself and you hover over at the top bar, the word more, it gives me the option, two options, purge and rater. And if you click rater, it takes you to the talk page. Doesn't actually take you to the talk page, but it gives you a template for which projects currently are showing up on the talk page. It allows you to add other wiki projects um, on the oh. talk page and you can change um, the importance and the quality. All in oh. one place, without ever leaving being on the article page itself. Well, no wonder you can do it so fast, Rosie. Now I know your secret. So, uh. <laughs> and that's why we're here, right? We share these secrets so that that's awesome. everyone can kind of do that. So, it must be a script then, because I've never seen that gadget before. I wonder if but. it's under preferences. I'm going to guess that's that might have been how I came across it, but. Huh. Like I have this page menu in the more menu, but I don't have that option to do what is it called again Rate, rating r-a-t-e-r -E raider huh rating, no i've yeah, never seen that yeah where you're rating okay let's see if i can sort this out really quickly yeah um, see if you can research whether it's a, a user script or a preference or yep, if anyone I mean, is out there um maybe somebody knows. else can do the raider. research yeah people are listening and, in and by the way uh vera loves your blue hair <laughs> from your blue glow from something there. Oh, okay. Well, um, so I'm wearing a t-shirt that's got the oh. number two on it and it's oh, awesome. glittery. And um yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean it really is like reflecting up off your shirt. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense now. Very yeah. cool. Okay. Well, maybe the next time <laughs> I um can finally go back to a hair salon, maybe <laughs> um, little blue streaks added, something to throw my, my, my fashion choice for this podcast is a Wikimania Montreal t-shirt. I'm wearing it because it's the only Wikimania that I took a train to. Uh, just to celebrate Earth Day, I'm, I'm <laughs> wearing my Wikimania Montreal t-shirt. Wow, it's, it's very, very uh, specific. <laughs> yes, always, always specific. So if we go back to this article here, yeah, it looks like a lot of the tools are getting stuck. Um, so I am just going to go straight to editing this. So some things I can see, like, oh, I don't know why Earth Day week is lowercase d there. So I will fix that real quick. Should be uppercase d. But yeah, things are really sluggish. Look at this. Oh, it's semi-protected already. I didn't know that. OK. Yeah, that often happens. I mean, it's like super high profile today. Yeah, it's going to get a lot of vandalism, um, or at least attempted vandalism. Another thing I thought was curious is that I'm not sure why Earth Day 2016 was added as paragraph number two. I thought the history was more important, unless there's a real reason why this is deserves to be in paragraph two. Oh, so I guess the Paris <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. Like, I mean, obviously Earth Day, you know, predates. I mean, it's the it's the dominant you know, uh, mm -hmm. issue largely of, of the environmental movement today, but obviously Earth Day predates, um, you know, predates, well, it predates the, the dominance of it as a narrative. It doesn't predate the, uh, the, the concern about it. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure I agree that, that, that that's the most important. That's the, that should be the second paragraph about Earth Day, yeah. but I mean, that should be, uh, it seems a little bit recentist. Um, right. 
<laughs> I'm going to be bold and move it to paragraph three. I think that's at least still giving its due. But you're right. It seems to imply some kind of causality of Earth Day to that when it just happens to be they chose that day to sign the Paris Agreement, right? Rosie, so. is that the Raider gadget? Um, actually, Mahir, I found something else um, that I think is the, the right link. And I'm trying to figure out how I can add it. Uh, I've put it in the private chat so that uh, Andrew mm -hmm. and Richard, you can see it. Do you know how to share it so that everyone else can see it? Yeah, let's see if we can. So there is um, someone else had said, it, it, these might be variants of each other, but there was, oh, so, oh, so yeah, Mahir said, yes, that's probably the same one that we're talking about here. Ah. Is this the one? Raider helps fill assessments and other things for Wiki Project Banners. Find it in the same menu as Move. So I think that's the link that uh, that, that Rosie gave. I put it up on the screen. So apparently, user mm -hmm. Evad37 uh, was the creator, or at least the host of it, in their user space. So hopefully, people can check it out. There's another one that we were we've just been told that this is old. That there's a new. Okay. One. Ah, we're out of date already. I will hide it then. <laughs> no, 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 no. I think he meant that the. Yeah. I think he meant that this was old, ah. and then this is new. Okay, I what's think. the current one, my here? Can you help us with that? I think, I think, I think. This I think one this is. one is. Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> so, but does that mean you need to still install that, it? You're going to have. Um, oh, you're going to do it right now, Andrew. Awesome. I'll do it live. I'll do it live. Do it live. <laughs> I don't think this is this is like too scary for I mean not com um, comments common. So for folks, this is your user scripts that you can edit here. So I can I got a whole bunch of junk here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the edit source button. And just to be to warn folks, there's no guarantee when you add another script it doesn't blow up something in the process. But try your best, and we'll see. Add Raider. Let's see if I get Rosie's magic here. So let's go in back to here, and let's go to Earth Day. Uh, do you need to, what's the word, refresh, blah, blah, blah? What's that? We need to, yeah, let's see what happens. Raider. Whoa, that's oh, so cool. Okay, now what happens? It. Whoa, whoa, there this is go. like high tech. Uh, you can see whoa. that you can add a wiki project. You, and you oh, can cool. change the <laughs> both the importance and the quality. If you look oh. at, this, at the very top, where mm -hmm. you see something that looks like a tag, it's next to the red trash can at the very mm -hmm. top. Click that and look, you can change all of it this is so cool. in one fell swoop. So let's say there's five of them that were stubs, but you're looking at the article and now the article is start or better class. You can change all of them in one fell swoop. And if you look at the bottom, the importance is you can change in one fell swoop. Right. Wow. Mahir, thank you so much for surfacing this. This is, he said it's been updated on April 8th, so it's still being actively maintained. Okay. Thanks, you, sir. I've had 30, 87, 37. This is why we do things like this. We are learning all the time. I mean, we're like, we got Wik Wikipedia veterans here and we're like still like trading notes because we just don't know all the tools. <laughs> that is awesome. Rosie, if you share your screen, you can show us this in action. Like, I'm like a newbie looking at this, like, like a shiny new gadget. You're a pro. So, so right. if you want to sh well, share your screen, you can show us how it works while I sure. navigate through here. I mean, it's like this is like a power tool in that most most uh, beginner editors look at all the the brackets and the gizmos and woozies, and I'm like, I'm a veteran editor, and I'm dizzy dizzied by this thing. So I want to see it in action from someone who knows how to use it. Show changes. Wow, this is so interesting. Oh, you know, it looks like it corrects some stuff in the process. Is that possible, Rosie? No, no I, I believe you have to make the changes yourself. But I didn't make any changes that suggested expanding, like renaming one of the categories. Let me see. If I say Raider, so I'm doing nothing, I think. And I say Show Preview or say Show Changes. Look at that. It, like, changed this to that 
automatically without me hitting any button. Is that is that something you've seen before? Maybe it's just expanding a template shortcut. It's just an expansion that uh -huh. um, would have maybe happened if someone else had gone in through the old fashioned way, but I'm right. not sure. It seems to have done some auto editing, which seems completely kosher. Like it, instead of just using environment, the shortcut, it's expand to wiki project environment. Right. So it's trying to like be canonical about how it uh, makes those edits. But if you share a tab, Rosie, we can bring it up on screen so you can show us how this works. Um, Streamyard.com is sharing your screen, but it doesn't look like it's sharing my screen. Oh, okay. We can do that if you're okay with it. How's that? Oops. Sure. Oh, there we go. Yep. Then you can go to your tab. Okay. So we were looking earlier at Peggy Shepard, mm -hmm. uh, her article. And so if I click Raider, which I did, Mm -hmm. I added uh, Wiki Project Women Writers and Environment and uh, Diaspora, but what if I wanted to change this one? Like, mm -hmm. maybe I think it should be mid, and actually I think it should be mid um, here. And so... Um, and how long has this been around? <laughs> I feel like I'm like, this is, what have they been doing without my knowledge here? So I've been, truth be told, I think the person, who introduced me to this was um, Aaron Hathaker. Mm -hmm. um, because of how this is um, related to Aura's scoring, right? Right, right. Um, And so that could be from Wikimedia, Wikimedia Cape Town days, which would oh, be 2018, something like that. So I've been using it for a couple of years. Um, I've been doing mass editing using it actually in the last, well, maybe I should say since this pandemic started. At first I was doing it for um, women medical doctors, reviewing their pages and um, improving their pages and updating their talk pages if appropriate. And in the last couple of weeks, I've been doing it for women writers because mm -hmm. there's so many women writers whose um, talk pages needed updating. They were stale. People hadn't done it. And so it's kind of like, if not me, then who? If not now, then when? Um, it's kind of thing you can do in front of the TV when you're watching, you know, whatever. There's Amy T. Austin, I think. I'd looked at this one and uh, yeah, I'd updated this a couple of minutes ago too. I added Wiki Project Argentina, Wiki Project Ecology, Wiki Project Higher Education. Um, she's a professor. So it's kind of cool that way. It's, um, you can, like I said, you can change all of them. Wow. You can change just one of them and you can cancel your change. And all from the comfort of staying in the actual document. And why that's important is you might have thought to yourself, I want to add, I want to make sure that four different categories are available for this article. Mm -hmm. And then you actually get to Raider and it's like, oh, wait a minute. Was she from Argentina or was she from Uruguay? I can't remember because I've been doing this on a hundred other articles in the last hour. You can just very quickly be able to move this box and go, oh, I see she's from Argentina. So I need to make sure I've added that. Wow. And I was looking at the edit history of this tool. It goes all the way back to 2017. Okay. So it's been around for a while. Well, I mean, the alpha was in 2017. So probably not until 2018 was it fully functional. But that's still pretty amazing that uh, it's been around for a while. That's so great. let's take a look at Earth Day. I don't know that I looked at that mm -hmm. time. Page. It's oh yeah, environment is and we talked about holiday, but holiday Wiki Project holiday is not active, which is why when I tried to add holiday, I wasn't able to do so. Right. I guess that's it. That's all I really have to say on this little tool, but it's handy. And it's just one other way that people can 
um, do something on Wikipedia without actually making um, large edits, especially if you're you're new to Wikipedia and you're kind of learning how to edit and maybe you want to do some what's called gnomish kind of things. This is something you can do. You can improve the, you know, you can review and improve the quality and importance ratings of um, articles on their top page. Why don't I go ahead and exit, stop sharing and let you get back to that. Well, you can keep it, you can keep it sharing. I mean, we can just bring it off the screen, but, uh, but that's fine. Richard, you wanted to share something? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to share. So this is not the only uh, environmental holiday. Um, you know, with Wikipedia's gift for the obscure, um, there <laughs> are there are what? How many is this? There are forty, 40 something. Forty something environmental awareness days uh, around the world, including International Repair Day, Mountain Day, which is apparently just when college students skip class and run up to the mountains. Um, <laughs> <laughs> International Tiger Day, Bison Day. Or, World Toilet Day, Project Survival, uh, Sunday, which was declared by Jimmy Carter in the 70s. Um, so there's a, if, if you ever get tired of, uh, if you get, you know, if you get nostalgic for Earth Day later in the year, there are many other days to celebrate. Um, hey, there's an article, a list of, um, if you go back to where you were. Oh, yes. Please. Click that. Um, I'm sorry, I have to do it again. Um, closed <laughs> it. No worries. But I'm surprised. Earth Day should have more more uh, wiki projects associated with it. I would think it only has two right now. Yeah, but I'm thinking what uh, environment holidays. Nope. I don't know. I think about that. Uh, let's see all the environmental dates. How many environmental dates are there? Oh, it starts with an hour. There is an oh. Earth Hour, which mm -hmm. you may not have been familiar with. So Earth Hour, which was uh, about a month ago. Um, <laughs> now I'm not sure if that's every year or not. Perhaps it is every year. Uh, there are days. There's World Wellness Day, World Pangolin Day. That's pretty relevant <laughs> this year. Wait, because Pangolin Day? Yeah, oh. World Pangolin Day, third Saturday of February. So a, a pangolin, the pangolin wildlife trade may well be responsible for the current coronavirus um, if people aren't familiar with that. So if we protected pangolins, we might have been protected us as well. So that's pretty important this year. Um, we'll consider Vera, Vera says she learned that there is a World Animal Day, but it's only in the Dutch speaking world. That's interesting. Oh. Uh, well, hopefully we can spread it. Just translate the article <laughs> to English Wikipedia and maybe right. we can have something about it. Uh, World Frog Day, International Day of Forest, International Seal Day, and most of these don't have articles yet, and who knows if they're all notable. Wait, but, what's the title know, of this list again? Uh, list of environmental dates. Wow, environmental dates. Environmental dates, because it includes uh, both days and dates and years and decades, because there are some decades, apparently, as well. Uh, Global Wind Day. Wind is a very, I mean, I don't think the wind is in danger itself, but <laughs> some things associated with it are. Car Free Day, uh, that's pretty, you know, we are, we are experiencing car free right now as we never have before. And uh, um, I, I wonder if there's an article um, about the environmental impact on English Wikipedia of, of this coronavirus. It's, you know, it's one of the few positive things that's happening here. The so, World Animal Day is October 4th. Is that right? So Vera says she celebrated on October 4th and everyone else stared at her like she was crazy. So. Monkey Day, E-Day, <laughs> great backyard bird count. Bike to work week, Victoria. Oh, oh, click on that one. That, that's interesting. Great backyard bird count. Huh. Hmm. It's very stubby that. or very short. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, okay. it's, it's not bad for what it is. We have uh, some horseshoe crab censuses in, in New York where people go out to the uh, go out to the beaches and count the horseshoe crabs. I think I don't know hmm. if that's a notable topic. World Water Week in Stockholm, No Card International Polar Year. International Year of the Child, International Year of the Dolphin, of sanitation, of natural fibers, of soils, of pulses. And I'm not sure exactly what pulses are. I think there's some kind of legume. The decade of drinking water, a lot of water decades, and you fight against desertification. So we are, we are. I think it's the last year of the fight against desertification. So, and the uh, the decade of biodiversity, and hopefully we'll be starting some new environmental decades as these things come up. Anyway, I wanted to share the 
the the broad yeah, diversity you. of decades and 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 hours. I wanted to actually maybe we should. Um, I know this is uh, we don't like to do hot topics, but um, I thought we should look at one of the global one of the uh, environmental articles that is a featured article on English Wikipedia. Global warming, um, which is actually a uh, which is actually a featured article so that's a you know it's a very tough concept to write a whole featured article on to get all the agreement on um even leaving aside you know the issue of climate deniers um it's a it's a big you know topic it's a controversial topic in other ways um and you know the english Wikipedia community i think has done a pretty good job in writing this hugely comprehensive article about about global warming um of course there are other issues with it and, and concerns you'll see of course one thing is that it's called global warming it is not called climate change. Uh, climate change <laughs> is what is general is, is is the more commonly seen in like the news media today and a lot of scientific publications. Um, there has been some debate over this. Um, I think the general understanding is that climate change is a is a slightly broader is a broader topic, um, and that it is still appropriate to have an article on global warming. Although this is of course debated. Um, one of the thing interesting things about a huge article like this. Um, is its talk page. Of course, it has, um, how many archives does it have? Uh, it has, oh, it has 80, 80 talk page archives. So if you'll see here, mm. 80, 80 pages of archives, which is not a huge, <laughs> uh, it's not a huge surprise. Um, and, but it, one interesting thing about a particularly popular article is it has frequently asked questions. <laughs> um, so these are questions where topics that have come up in the past where like someone always like raises this point and they have to like, you know, uh, explain why the article is the way it is in uh, like a short amount of space because people keep asking the same questions. Um, so is there really scientific consensus in global warming? The global warming ended in oh 19, 1998. It's 24 questions long. Yeah. Isn't global warming just a theory? Wasn't Greenland much warmer in the period of Norse settlement? Weren't scientists telling us in the 70s that the earth was cooling mm. instead of warming? Doesn't water vapor cause 98% of the greenhouse effect? Did the CERN cloud experiment prove that global warming is caused not by human activity, but by cosmic rays? Uh, what about this really interesting peer-reviewed paper I just read that says blah, blah, blah? Um, should we include the view that global warming will lead to planetary doomer catastrophe? So uh, some of these are more, are more interesting than others. So I'd say, like, for example... Um, Oh, here's, here's the, what about the one about the 70s? I thought that was kind of interesting. It, it told me something that I didn't quite under, knew before. Weren't scientists telling us in the 70s that the Earth was cooling instead of warming? They weren't. See the article on global cooling? An article in the Bolton <laughs> of the American Meteorological Society has reviewed the scientific literature at that time and found that even during the 70s, the prevailing scientific concern was over warming. The common misperception that cooling was the main concern during the 70s arose from a few studies that were sensationalized in the popular press, such as a short nine-paragraph article that appeared in Newsweek 1975. And Newsweek later apologized for it. Of course, they apologized for it in 2014. And the author of the article approved the idea that uh, it was used to like global warming. Um, so this is uh, from maybe a slightly different angle. Um, should we include the view that global warming will lead to plantar doomer catastrophe? Um, and the answer is, uh, this page is about the signs of global warming. It doesn't talk about plantar doomer catastrophe. For technical explanation, see catastrophic climate change. And for paleoclimatic examples, see PETM or the great dying. Um, another nice thing you'll see here is that um, it is or was the subject of a wiki education uh, course assignment, uh, um, and there was a there's the course page for it. Um, so there's some students uh, worked on this. I'm sure many people. I'm sure many probably other students have done as well, and maybe in a more informal capacity. Um, but it's nice to see that one of these really big topics um, can can be covered in a positive way on on Wikipedia. Well, Richard, you mentioned that this was a featured article, but when we first looked at it. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the actual article itself. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I noticed that your, in your view, it doesn't show that it's a featured article up next to the name. But in my view, it does. Oh, yeah. And so now I can, this is one more tool or gadget that you can turn on very easily, more easily than what Andrew just demonstrated earlier uh, to add the radar. So I'm going to share my screen. I'll remove mine. 
And so if you're looking at my screen and you see underneath global warming, the title of the article, it says that it's a featured article and that Oris predicts its rating to be that of a featured article. So yeah. if you're logged in uh, with your username, so this doesn't work if, you're, if you if you come in um, through an IP address, but if you're logged in, you can be able to do this too without clicking on the talk page and then taking a look at the article, let's say you'd go, you would have to scroll down to the wiki projects, which are listed somewhere here. Where are they? Uh, this article is of interest to multiple wiki projects. And there you can see it's rated as a featured article. So you don't have to go to the talk page. You can actually see the rating and the projected rating right here on your um, on the article itself. If you do this, go to your preferences and click the tab for gadgets. And then you scroll down and it's under it's in this section called appearance. And it's it's just quality or something like that, right? Display a an assessment of an article's quality in page mm -hmm. header. And if you enable that and you enable it just by clicking um, the box next to that, and then you would click save, and then you refresh your screen, then it's going to show this for every article that you go to. I mean, Yeah, that's very cool. So this page is uh, predicted quality to be a good article, and it's rated as a B-class article. So you can see kind of how that gives you just a little more information when you first get to an article. I think that's cool. I, I, I find that helpful. Yeah, I think that's great. And it's one of those things where you're like, how come that's not? On by default because that would help us a lot more and then that last thing that both you and I have on Rosie is not a gadget but a user script so if we show whoops if we go back to the global warming you had it on as well but you'll notice that we have two ratings here showing for that so we have the featured article that is showed by the gadget which is display an article's quality but we also have this from our good friend, Aaron Halfacker, right? right? So this is an extra one, which is using ORS, which is something we've discussed before, which is the objective revision score. And this is using AI machine learning. It's, it's a system that's been trained on thousands and thousands of articles and ratings. And now it can predict just by scanning the article um, algorithmically, what it predicts as its output, which is what you have there. And if you're interested in that, that would be, um, same way we just showed you how to edit your common.js. This is this line in my common.js, which is epic fail, which is the username of Aaron Halfacker, article quality.js. And this is kind of neat in that it will give you now, when you visit a page, the rating that the AI or the Aura system gives the article it'll pop up after a little bit of lag time. And that's what you see here. What's even cooler, I don't know if you notice this, Rosie, but when you go to your edit history, when you look at the art edit history, it gives you a little color indicator. Yeah, it does. Right and, here. Uh, I can tell you that if memory serves me right, Andrew wrote me a message and said that he added this little color thing um, specifically to help me. <laughs> <laughs> we had all the little upgrades on um, scoring because I told him that I spend a lot of time reviewing articles um, related to women's biographies, women's issues, women's works. And, you know, you have to look at them really closely before we had these tools and gadgets. And now when he added these colors, it's just helpful for the eye. You can. Right. Uh, <coughs> And if you hover over one of the green boxes or yellow boxes, mm -hmm. at least for me, it shows the score. I, right. I'm seeing it for 
unfortunately the screen share doesn't show it, but I do see it on mine. I see. And it and it's kind of neat because you're right. So let me hover over this. This shows you that between these two revisions, the the yellow and the green one was a significant change, right? That bumped it from if you look here, it says B class with a 4.4, which is this one. This is B class. And then if you go here, someone made an edit that turned it into a uh, FA with a 5.3 score. So one edit made this difference, which is kind of interesting. And if you click on the, the comparison, you'll see what it was. It was that there was a CN, a citation needed in the old one. And someone filled in citation, and in the eyes of the AI system, that was enough to bump it up from a one class to the next class. Look at that. So oh, actually, had two CNs, so had two citation needed, and then either one was removed and one was filled in with a reference. This one change was enough in the eyes of the OR system to bump it from one class to the next class, which is kind of interesting. For me, this is. Um really helped me be a better Wikipedia editor. Mm -hmm. I learned that adding more wiki links bumps up the score, adding more categories, adding more headers, adding more citations, adding more inline citations. All of these things contribute to improving the score. And it's not necessarily that I want to game the system, if you will, but it really does improve the quality of an article if you use appropriate headers, if you have more citations, if you have more inline citations, if you don't have templates. You know, those templates you see at the top of an article that says that it's missing inline citations right. or, um, or, or that it's an orphan, which are you know good reminders of what an article needs. But if you make those improvements and you remove those templates, the ra rating of the article, accord AI will rate the article higher if you make those edits. And so it's these little things that improve an article, which you might not really be thinking about, but they do. They they actually. Right a notable improvement. And then you can make this change on the talk page to move an article into a different, either um, quality class or importance class if that's appropriate too. Right, right. Yeah, you can see also when it went from green to yellow, let's do a quick diff there to see what that change was. And that was probably the addition of the CN, the citation needed tags. So someone added content, but then added the citation needed and that downgraded the article when this was added to it. Really interesting. I mean, really, I mean, I mean, theoretically, it should improve the quality of the article. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you're right. There's a difference between human and uh, AI rating, because I think, oh, that's better. I mean, you know, obviously, by it's objectively, it has improved the quality of the article, because you know, like, you know, you shouldn't trust this that much. But but Richard, you know plenty of editors who would see the CN tag and say, OK, that, that means it's not FA anymore. Right? Yeah, they're, you, you they're, 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 they're that wrong. Same yeah, I know. Yes, <laughs> they're, they're the wrong humans with the wrong opinions. The wrong humans. <laughs> well, I see plenty of articles that have a lot of prose, uh, prose, P-R-O-S-E, prose mm -hmm. in them. But they're, they lack inline citations. They might only have um, external links. Mm -hmm. And the AI rates them as C class because there's so much content or prose in this article but generally we're not going to rate it c-class if there are no references and there are only external links so the ai doesn't see it the same way as maybe the human eye and i always defer to how i look at something i use ai as a um tool but it's not the end all you have to still use your judgment when you're doing these ratings. Right, right. And we, we have found some some quirky things where you add something um, and it looks innocent, but it completely changes the grade of the uh, article. And, uh, you know, you do still find some anomalies. But in general, I think this has been a, a real godsend of a tool in general because we, we just can't depend on human beings to hand edit or hand rate every single revision, right? We have no. the AI that does this in a way that is... Not perfect, but really quite good, relatively. Yeah. Great. So um, we spent most of our time on the Earth Day, but as a great launching point to kind of show the tools that we use. And I learned something great with this, the Raider tool. And we're just always discovering these 
user scripts that we have this robust community of of developers in all different corners of Wikipedia that make these really slick things that enhance the experience. But I don't think any two Wikipedians have the same configuration because of this. It's like we all have this cobbled together, customized um, environment. It's like buying a Toyota Camry and everyone tricks it out with different things, <laughs> with engines right. and tailpipes and, and uh, color schemes and everything. It's really weird, but. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the uh, Earth Day activities can be found at this uh, page that you're seeing at the bottom of the screen, hopefully. Is it here? Yes. So any last words, Richard and Rosie? I guess I, I just want to share briefly, if, if you want to check out, there is a pretty awesome page on the impact of the coronavirus uh, pandemic on the environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, especially about air pollution, I mean, it's pretty remarkable how air pollution has gone down. And uh, that might be a fun and positive topic to uh, to work on if you have some uh, some time. Well, what's the name of that again, Richard? It is um, well, it has an annoying name, but it's impact of the 2019-20 coronavirus pandemic on the environment. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Rosie, for joining us, and Richard. And we hope everyone's going to have a great Earth Day with your activities. Hopefully we gave you some launch points to try to do some editing here. Um, if you have any ideas on future topics that we should be covering, I think a whole uh, episode about 10 gadgets or user scripts every Wikipedia should enable would be a great episode given how many things we keep running into um, in terms of enhancements to the vanilla stock user experience of wikipedia that would be really interesting so we do have a page at the wikipedia weekly um, meta page so if you just go to meta and go wwni wikipedia weekly network i for ideas you can go to that page and add anything that you like there that you'd want for programming for the future and thanks to folks for subscribing to our youtube channel we finally have 100 subscribers so now we can I'm have a, a i'm officially going to declare jarek chan our 100th subscriber oh um, nice Derek Derek uh, subscribed a little bit earlier, but but um, it's, he's the only person who's visible. So, Derek Chan, you you have a free stuff for me of your choice. Great. Oh, Siobhan, that's uh, I I, hey, I can't believe you, we actually Hi. taught Siobhan something. I mean, you're our, the ultimate power user. Hopefully, you heard our section about iNaturalists that we're talking about as well. So uh, we are. Yes, because and that's, that's who taught you how to use iNaturalists. So and hopefully, we can have you. Yeah, and hopefully we can have you as a guest on future uh, environmentally focused uh, shows. Um, too bad we couldn't uh, join today. Well, actually, Rosie, you had a good point. Maybe we should just have a whole show just about iNaturalist. We haven't done that before. So that would be pretty cool just to show the ins and outs and how to change the license, which is not trivial sometimes. Um, I wonder yeah. if we could actually have someone demoing it, you know, like walking around someplace where it's safe. Yeah, absolutely. You can actually do that. You can run StreamYard off a of mobile, right, Richard? You just send a link yeah. to the mobile, and it runs perhaps, on. Uh... Perhaps somewhere in their backyard who uh, has a, <laughs> has a quarantine partner. Um, <laughs> well, I was in a place where I could walk out my door, and I live in a very rural location, so I could walk out my door and start taking photos right away. Um, right. But I'm not best suited to be demoing it. <laughs> ah, on. Andra would be keen, I'm sure. Well, great. Maybe that would be the right person to to do the demoing for us. But staying safe, of course. Right, right. We don't want folks in the urban environment to necessarily violate any kind of isolation guidelines. So, right. Yep. Okay. Well, thanks everyone, and make sure you know about our site. Uh, where are we? Oh, yes. So we are going to put up for the last time our contact info for the site, which is right there. We have our Facebook group, Wikipedia Weekly. We also have our Twitter account. We now will have a nicer, by the next episode, we'll have a nicer URL for the YouTube channel. And thanks, everyone, for subscribing and letting us know some feedback on how to optimize Thank the show. Thank you for listening and for participating and giving us your comments. And uh, see you another time. All right. Take care, folks. Bye. Take care.